one of the oldest cities of northern Mesopotamia, Mardin seems locked in time, with its unique texture and amazing architecture. Mardin, with its elegant limestone buildings overlooking the Mesopotamian plains, is arguably one of Turkey's most beautiful cities. It's also one of the country's most historically rich and culturally interesting, with the region being home to a mix of Kurds, Arabs, and Assyrians. We had seen a couple of pictures, but we really didn't expect such beauty and authenticity. Besides, Mardin has little mass tourism. We were lucky enough to be some of the few tourists in the city. However, it won't remain under the radar for much longer, so you better visit soon. While you can see all of the historical sites over the course of a few days, allow yourself even more time to visit the nearby sites of the scenic Deir el Zafarin Monastery and Dara, the important East Roman fortress city. While this Martin guide contains a list of specific landmarks you should seek out during your visit, we'll start off with the number one activity to do in Martin, aimlessly wandering the city streets. Martin has a single central street, Jumhuriyat Jadasi, which cuts through the entire old city. As you'd probably guess, this is where you're going to find numerous landmarks in addition to restaurants and local shops. It's also along this street that you can find the popular Amir Hammam, Bath House, and the entrance to the Covered Bazaar. For those doing souvenir shopping, one of the main things to buy here is handmade Martin soap, and there is no shortage of soap shops on the main road. Transportation in Martin is primarily maintained by minibuses and buses. You can travel around Martin's counties via buses. These vehicles are stationed in busy spots and they ring around many stops every 5 to 10 minutes. The Zinkuriye Madrasa This Islamic theological college was founded in 1385 by Isa Bey. As well as being one of Mardin's best preserved buildings, it's noted for the stunning views from its rooftop that swoop over the entire town and out to the Mesopotamian plains below. The complex is comprised of a domed mosque, a mausoleum, and two tranquil inner courtyards. The architectural highlight of the building is the intricately decorated and imposing doorway, which is a beautiful example of Islamic artistry. Don't miss the tiny mosque's grand mikrab, prayer niche. It is possible to arrive at this wonderful place by taxi, and avoid having to climb a good number of steps and slopes. The Kazmiye Madrasa this 15th-century madrasa complex consists of a theological college and domed mosque. The entire complex has a peaceful atmosphere, with its buildings set around graceful courtyards. Upstairs, you can explore the rooms where students once studied and lived while learning the Quran. It was closed at the time we visited. Culture vulture tourists shouldn't miss a visit here, as this is the best madrasa attraction in town, where you can understand and appreciate how these buildings would have originally functioned. As with the Zinkuriye Madrasa, there is some astonishingly elaborate stone carving work on the doorway and another gorgeous vista to admire from the rooftop. Given the beauty of the complex and the views it provides, it is a very popular place for young locals and professionals alike for photographic production. <laughs> Tucked into the eastern edge of the bazaar neighborhood is the Ulu Kami, that translates to Grand Mosque, built in the 11th century by the Artukid dynasty. The minaret, with its unique stone carvings, and the vast courtyard, is the highlight of a visit here. The building suffered badly during a Kurdish uprising in 1832, and today the interior prayer room, divided into three sections, is rather plain. If you're interested in mosque architecture, there are plenty more mosques in town to explore, and most of them are strung out along, or just off the main road Jumhuriyat Jadasi. On the way to the Ulu Mosque, you certainly pass the bazaar. Mardin's bazaar area spills down the slope, off the main street of Jumhuriyat Jadasi. This neighborhood of narrow cobblestone alleys linked by staircases is where you come to soak up the bustling heart of this ancient town. As many of the lanes can't be accessed by cars, donkeys are still used for transport by some traders here, and you'll spy them, often touting tasseled harnesses, pulling carts to haul goods. Although some stalls have now devoted themselves to tourist souvenirs, this is still a thriving local bazaar, with vegetable and fresh produce sellers, shops selling everything from bed frames to kitchenware, and traditional craft workshops with woodworkers, metal workers, and other artisans. It's a fascinating place for a stroll. A 
A church that you won't want to miss visiting is the 40 Martyrs Church. This 4th century church still holds services every Sunday, which tourists are welcome to attend. If you're not here on Sunday, the church is open daily for visits, the current opening times are posted on the gate. Although small, the interior holds some beautiful icons and paintings that are definitely worth a peek. In particular, above the entrance are some intricate carvings commemorating the Christian martyrs of Cappadocia, which the church was renamed in honor of in the 15th century. Martin's Museum is set in one of the town's grandest 19th century villas, which was once the headquarters of the Syriac Catholic Patriarchate. The well-curated collection inside may be small but it highlights the vast history of Anatolia's southeast region. In particular, the displays of Assyrian and Bronze Age pottery are excellent. Even if you're not a museum fan, the building is worth a visit simply to walk through its ornate courtyard and up to its terraces with its regal colonnades. It has been restored to an impressive standard, and walking through the rooms gives you a good idea of the fine style in which local merchants and others high up in the echelons of Martin society back then would have lived. Martin Post Office is one of the town's finest examples of its 19th century villa architecture, and probably one of the most ornate post office buildings you'll ever see. First built in 1890, the building functioned as a family home until the 1950s when it became the post office. Today, the main section of the building has been beautifully restored and opened to the public as a historical site, with the actual post office only taking up a small space on the ground floor. For most people, the main staircase that leads from the ground floor up to the first floor terraces, and the views from those terraces, are the main reason to visit. This is an extremely popular place to visit as a photographic location, so don't be surprised if you pass by a local bride getting her wedding photos taken on the stairs here. From the terraces, a small staircase leads to the rooftop, where there's a cafe with excellent views. Martin Castle towers above town on a rocky crag. You can't actually enter the castle area currently, but you can climb towards it using the steep path that leads up to the fortress starting from the Zincurie Medrizesi. If you do want to hike up the path as far as possible, time your visit after the worst of the day's heat has dissipated, as walking up under the midday blazing sun is quite exhausting. Dating from the Roman era, the castle was extended in the 15th century so that all the inhabitants of Marden would be able to seek refuge inside in the event of an impending attack. A relief carving of two magnificent lions can still be seen on the gateway. Dedicated to Ananias, the Deir al-Safarin monastery complex contains three churches, which adjoin the rear facade of the arcaded courtyard, all surrounded by high fortress-like walls. The Patriarch of the Syriac Orthodox Church moved his residence here in 1160 when he and his followers were driven out of Antioch, modern Antakya. The building originally dates from the 5th century but has been destroyed twice, first by the Persians and then by Tamerlane. Don't miss the underground sanctuary chamber and the chapel side room with its 300-year-old wooden throne and floor mosaics. You can only enter the building by guided tour, which takes place when enough people have arrived. Solo travelers may have to wait half an hour or so on arrival. The monastery lies about 7 kilometers east of Martin. The ancient Roman city of Dara, 40 kilometers southeast of Mardin, is one of southeast Turkey's hidden attractions. While tourists flock to Turkey's famed archaeological sites of Ephesus and Pergamum, Dara receives only a handful of visitors, allowing you the feeling that you've stumbled onto your own secret ruin. The Dara Mesopotamia ruins do not often appear in tourism brochures of Turkey despite their importance in the historical world. The city was a strong fortress for the Romans and was one of the significant trade centers of Mesopotamia in ancient times. The ruins of the ancient city of Dara, featuring ancient rock tombs dating back to the 5th century AD, have been compared to the famed city of Ephesus in Aegean Turkey, earning it the nickname the Ephesus of Mesopotamia, the breadbasket of the ancient Near East. The necropolis, which literally means the city of the dead, is where religious ceremonies were held during the Roman era and hundreds of people were buried together. Now, it is one of the most popular spots in the ancient city. 
Archaeological work here is still continuing. There are several different sections of ruins that can be visited, with the main highlights besides the necropolis are two separate underground cisterns that were part of Dara's extensive irrigation and aqueduct system. Thanks for watching our video. We hope you enjoyed it, and don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Stay healthy and see you soon.